Spirit, thank you, God, that you are here, moving in this place, Lord. Mm. We eagerly await Jesus, Holy One, food from you today. <laughs> Holy Spirit, bring forth revelation, Lord. We're just going to wait for you, Jesus. Help us, Lord, to have an ear to hear with and eyes to see with, Lord, what it is that you want to show us individually. Help us, Lord, not to interpret our own ways of what it is that you want for us to see, Jesus. Help us not to get in the way, Lord. Help us not to get in the way, Lord. So easily get in the way. And Lord, I pray all of you and none of me. Lord, it's all yours. And we're here to serve you and to worship you, Jesus. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Mm. Martha and Mary. Martha and Mary. Let's have a look at those two women today. <laughs> uh. The Lord just put in my heart the story of Martha and Mary. The only thing that we know about Martha is what we have in this story, actually. Not much of a history about her in any sense. Just pretty much this. But you can tell a lot about her from the way that she's acting and moving. Uh, so much for us to learn. <laughs> All right, let's dig into it. Luke 10, uh, 38. As Jesus and the disciples continue on the way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Notice it is her seeing and recognizing Jesus, inviting him in. Not Mary, but Martha. <laughs> Funny enough, her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. So he's in the house, entering, and he's sitting down, and Mary just, I would assume right away, just sit at his feet, just listening to him, just wanting to be close to him, just recognizing the nature of his being, right? Hmm. But Mary was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. Let me read another translation for you. I like this one. But Mary overly occupied and too busy. So you can get overly occupied and too busy with the world's affairs when Jesus is in the house. All right? So don't get distracted by things that go on around you. Stay focused on Jesus. Even though you are preparing a meal, just stay right next to Jesus, just like Mary. Oh, there is so much in this, isn't there? Do we recognize this? What do you do when Jesus is in your house? When, when you feel Jesus, when you experience Jesus, what do you do? Have you noticed how very easily the carnal gets in the way? It wants to do something. It wants, it get nervous in the presence of Jesus. Have you noticed that? That's why we have to die. Die to the carnal. <laughs> but Mary was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, <laughs> complaining, doesn't it seem unfair to you? She's not talking to Mary. She's talking to Jesus, hoping to win his favor. 
not speaking to Mary, but speaking to, to you know, can, you, can I win you over, Jesus, on this one? Because I'm doing it right. You know, I'm working here to get your attention. All right? That's not what Jesus wants from us. Because Jesus has done it all. Just think about it. Jesus is in your house and you start cooking meal. <laughs> Just think about that. You know, what do you do when he's in your house, okay? So, <laughs> Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here, just sits here? She really doesn't get what Jesus is all about, does she? <laughs> just sits here. If she would have known what Jesus was all about, she wouldn't have said that. She wouldn't have sat right down next to Mary, right? So it's a picture for us, for the spiritual part of us and for the carnal part, right? Mary is a picture of the spiritual within and Martha is a picture of the carnal, the striving, everything that represents the works that wants to come in and interfere. Hmm. Doesn't it seem unfair to you? Unfair. Now she's trying to win him, win him over <laughs> in the fair business. You know, have you ever tried that? Talking with Jesus? Lord, I think that's unfair that they're having that and it's unfair compared to of what I'm having. Right? We all recognize this, don't we? We all recognize the way she's speaking, don't we? we while we're working really hard in the carnal for Jesus, have you ever done that? <laughs> Helping Jesus out a little bit, you know, even though... <laughs> It doesn't say that he asked her to do that. It doesn't say that. I find that interesting. So she's pulling the unfair card. <laughs> I think it's unfair. I'm doing all the work here. And my sister just sits here while I do all the work. <laughs> Tell her to come and help me. <laughs> Oh, Lord, help me, help me, help me. Because I'm doing it the way that I think I should be doing it when you're in the house. Why won't you help me, Lord? Right? She's acting like that. Hmm. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, <laughs> you are worried about and upset over all these details. Have you ever, have you noticed that everything in life is a detail for Jesus? Everything in life is a detail for him. Have you noticed that? There's not a problem that he can't solve, okay? There's nothing that he can't fix. He can fix it all. Think about that. That's why everything here is a detail. Now, if we just follow him, like I said, everything else he will, he will, he will set it up so that everything else in your life is just a side reward of following him. Mary got that right away. <laughs> there is only one thing worth being concerned about. I like this translation because it says one thing, and that's the truth, and that's Jesus. We should only be concerned about one thing. Jesus. Concern means to really take care of, right? To contemplate upon, to take within, to be occupied with, right? Mm. That's what it means, concerned. That you can't stop thinking about it, that you want to dig deeper into it somehow. I have concern for my daughter. Everything that she does, I want to know. You know, in that sense, I'm concerned. Where are you when she's out? What time are you coming home? I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. I'm occupied with her because I love her. Yeah. It's, you, you multiply that with Jesus, and you know, that's the reason why he's, we should be concerned about him because he is overly, overly concerned about us. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed how he... His spirit transmits in that sense of what he is doing toward us so that we will act the same toward him. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. First he pours out 
and then we pour it back to him. It's all about giving it back to Jesus. It's got nothing to do with us. It's all about pouring into him again so that he will be recognized for who he is. It's not about us. I like that. It's never about us. Thank you, Lord. You are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. <laughs> Everything that we do for Jesus will not be taken away from us. Not one thing. It will stay because it is from him. And since he is the eternal life, then it will stay. Isn't that worth thinking about? Yeah. So everything we do, it will stay. Everything we do from, for him, it will stay. It, nothing that you do for Jesus is in vain. Nothing. If you minister to someone and they didn't get saved, but you really tried really hard, or they did get saved, and it wasn't the way that you planned it for it to be, or whatever it is, but everything that you do for Jesus, it will stay. Remember, everything is written down. <laughs> we're going to be standing, <laughs> and we're going to stand account for everything that we do, so that, he, so that everything that we do for him is in the book. Everything that we do. I find that comforting to think about. I don't find that scary in one bit. Not at all. I find that comforting. Let me just read this another one for you because it's interesting. I like the wordings. But Ma Martha, overly occupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving. <laughs> and she came up to him. <laughs> I can just imagine her in the corner, complaining in the corner, you know, complaining in the kitchen. Why is she doing that? And I'm sweating out here, and she's not. Have you noticed that the carnal does not like to serve? The carnal does not like to serve. The, car, the carnal wants something, yeah. right? It always, Jesus, isn't it unfair? She wants something for the carnal. The carnal does not like to serve. You know, the other day I was with someone and my carnal was like, I, I, I want something too. I want something too. I deserve it because I'm really good. That's the carnal. That's the nature of the carnal. You know, I just said, just be quiet. Just serve the house. That's all you're here to do. Just serve the house. Hmm? If we could die a little to that. Now, if she would have been in more, much more in that state, you wouldn't, we wouldn't have that story. Right? We wouldn't be reading about Martha and Mary. Very famous story. Let me read on here a little bit. Was distracted with much serving, and she came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you? Doesn't it mean anything to you, all the things that I'm doing, Lord? I'm working really, really hard here for you, Jesus. doesn't mean anything to you. And you know what? No, it doesn't because he's done all the work. Mm -hmm. He wants you to worship him and to pay attention, just like Mary, just to listen. He made it so easy that it's very difficult for the carnal. It's very difficult for the carnal. Mm -hmm. It takes years of dying in the carnal just to get it a little bit. You know this. You know how it is in life, when life starts, Monday morning, life starts, and the daughter has to go to school, and you have to make the food for her and all of that, you know. Then it's easy to fall into those patterns, isn't it? And on Sunday, everything is great, and you're with Jesus in church, and you can do all things with him. And you promise, and you, may, and you think all these glorious things with him. And then you find yourself Monday morning stumbling back into the patterns of the carnal. So it takes years to have a little compassion with yourself. 
and just step back. Just let Jesus take over. Just step back, let Jesus take over. It's the best place for us to be. I find that interesting, these wordings. Is it nothing to you that my sister had left, have left me? <laughs> Is it nothing to you that my sister have left me to serve all alone? <laughs> it's so hard to be in the garden. Have you ever had a pity party? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it comes on a regular basis, doesn't it? So just act like Mary in that moment. Just go and sit at his feet. There is peace at his feet. Peace at the feet of Jesus Christ. The only place where there is peace. And the only place where you can hear what it is that you should do. If there is anything that you should do, right? Tell her, tell her then to help me to lend a hand and do her part along with me. Now she's deciding what is right. <laughs> Have you noticed that with the carnal nature? It makes up all these things of right and wrong. Self-righteousness, right? This is right, this is wrong. This is how it should be done, Lord. Don't you think? Yes, you do. So I'm just... <laughs> You don't even pay attention to if Jesus is answering you. You just move along, don't you? But Mary is waiting at the feet of Jesus. Now, how long are you willing to wait for Jesus? How long are you willing to wait for him? Just, just to wait. Just to wait for him in worship just like Mary. Have you noticed that we don't hear anything about anything of what Mary is saying? Have you noticed that she doesn't defend herself? Have you ever thought about that? We don't hear anything about that. Now why is that? When you're with Jesus you don't need to defend yourself. When you do the right thing you don't need to defend yourself. You just sit and wait with Jesus. And all the horse of hell can come against you, and that's fine. But if you know you're at the right place with Jesus, you can just wait. Right? You can just wait. Isn't that wonderful? He made it so easy for us that we can hardly grasp it. I also find it interesting because this story is such a woman <coughs> thing. <laughs> I thought about it when I prepared for it because I couldn't really think about any other stories of where we hear women come into such a striving as Martha. This is such a typical woman thing. I remember when I grew up, my mother, whenever a guest was coming to the house, have you, have you, do you know what I'm getting at? My mother would flip out in the cleaning area, you know, she would just, everything, and she would start to clean out everything and where nobody would look. It's a woman thing. I don't know what it is, I don't know why, but we have to let go of it. Because it gets in the way, it gets in the way toward our relation with Jesus. Don't get overly occupied with life outside. Have you noticed that in your life? Mm -hmm. Just get occupied with stuff, all kinds of stuff. Right? I think it's more of a woman thing than it is a male thing, but not drawing it black and white, but there is something to it. I thought about it. <laughs> oh, I also think it's interesting that when you, we hear all about the spirits in the Bible, they're all, <laughs> most of them are name dropped as female spirits, right? Deceptive spirits all have females' name, right? Jezebel, Delilah, and all of those, you know? I find that interesting to think about. Not in my sermon, just a side remark. But I think it's e interesting. Two women, two sisters, 
both eagerly longing to serve the Lord, but only one had got it right. <laughs> only one of them got it right. The other one was eager to serve him as well because she was the one inviting him home, right? <laughs> so you can have the right intentions with Jesus, but if you don't know how to listen to the Spirit of God, then you're going to act like Martha. You're going to get in the way. You're going to start doing your own thing, building your own house, making a tent in the forest, <laughs> having a campfire of your own. <laughs> Right? I think that's interesting to think about. So the ones next to you could be the one that would oppose you most in your relation with Christ. Have you noticed that? So that maybe the ones in your family could be the one that are opposing your relationship with Christ the most. We see this displayed out here, right? Let me just put it in another way. Expect it. Just expect it. Then you're prepared. The closest ones to you will, not, will most likely be the ones not to understand the nature of your relationship with the Lord. Remember in Matthew 10, the 34, it says, Jesus says, I did not bring a peace, but a sword. I like that scripture. It's my, one of my favorite scriptures. I want to read it to you. It says, I have come to set, and uh, let me just read him. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to, to the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, the dearest one. Remember, I talked about that last Sunday. And a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and your best friends against you. The ones that you think, I have no idea why I'm talking so much about it. I, get, I think I'm preparing you for something. But anyway, your enemies will be right in your own household. <laughs> mm, we see that in this story, don't we? But don't worry about it. Because as long as you're with Jesus... <laughs> You're in the right place. Everything else might come against you. Thousands may come against you, the Bible says. That doesn't matter. The Lord is with you, right? <laughs> when you're placed before the Lord, you don't need to defend yourself. Jesus will defend you. He will. You don't know when it's going to happen, but he will. That's why you just have to wait for him. Don't start to move into your own business of the affairs. Just wait for Jesus. Even when the dearest one of yours come up against you. And they will. All to test and trial your faith. We see it over and over and over in the Bible. It should be absolutely no surprise to us. <laughs> now, can you still be happy because you have Jesus? You know, I read this story. I, I just, you know how I love to read about it, the saints. Yesterday I was reading about uh, St. Therese, and she said, uh, even though... She was depicting herself as a small bird going through the, torn, the thorns. And while she was moving through the thorns, sticking her and scratching her and really, you know, putting her into suffering, she, she was writing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my melody even more beautiful for you, Lord. <laughs> Could we perhaps come to a little bit of that place with the Lord where everything is not about us? where some of our lives should be much more about Jesus, right? Just much more about serving Him. Yes, it's going to hurt, but yes, He's got your back. Yes, He's going to make it up, but yes, it's going to hurt. That's the rhythm of the Lord. Have you noticed that? Every time I ask Jesus for something, some war breaks out on me, and then sometime later, oh joy. <laughs> 
Isn't that the rhythm of the Lord? There is a timing and a season for everything. In Proverbs, you have that, right? Time to cry, time to reap, time to sow, time to harvest. You have all these, right? It should be no surprise to us. I don't know why I'm talking about this. Not in my sermon. But just must be a word. Just think about it. Much more of Jesus and less of us. He should increase, I should decrease. <laughs> Martha. <laughs> Martha means lady or mistress of the house. Mary means beloved. <laughs> now isn't God all about names all the times? Yes, he is. I like that. Women are so good at striving, striving. And it means bitter, sometimes violent conflict or dissension. Isn't that what Martha is trying to create here? Conflict. Or she's bringing in conflict, right? She's not bringing peace. Every time we bring in our own business, we bring in conflict. Have you noticed that when you walk with the Lord? When you, when you bring in your own affairs with Jesus, suddenly there is a conflict in the situation. Something does not work out right the way that you think it would. Maybe it's because you're in the way. And maybe it's because you're not patient enough. Have you noticed everything about Martha is now? She does not... <laughs> own the uh, character of patience. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Isn't that one of the first and foremost traits that Jesus is shaping within us when we start to walk with him? Patience. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cuts every unpatience off. Mm -hmm. Down. <laughs> And you're like, wow, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> and when you ask, oh, Lord, help me to be more patient, then he will put you in a situation where it's needed, right? You know these things. <laughs> That's the working of the Lord. Striving. Mary was striving. Striving means to devout serious effort or energy, to struggle in opposition, that means she was struggling against, moving against, unpatient. She had the patience just to sit and listen, to worship, right? Takes patience, takes training in the carnal, right? Mm -hmm. To devout serious effort or energy. She was very serious, wasn't she? She was not afflicted when Mary told her, when Mary told Jesus right next to her that everything that she was doing was actually unfair, <laughs> she was not afflicted by that. People will come and tell you that what you do for Jesus is not right. That even the things that you do for Jesus, other Christians, <laughs> you do for Jesus, they will tell you the way that you do it is not right and that you should do it in a different way. I don't know how many times I've experienced that. I think Christians sometimes, sorry to say it, are some of the worst people. Sorry to say it, but it's the truth. <laughs> right? But we should not be afflicted by it. We should what? Pray. Am I right? Go to the Lord and pray. And what is the training all about? The training is all about increasing our faith in our work with Jesus. That's what it's all about. It's got nothing to do with people. Remember, we don't fight against flesh and blood. Remember that? Ephesians 6, right? You know this. So think about those things. I like that. I like to contemplate on that. Because we can easily follow the carnal, can't we? We can easily move along in the carnal. Mary is fighting against worldly affairs. <laughs> She's at the right place. That's how you fight. She doesn't fight with sc screaming and yelling and complaining or anything. No, she's fighting in peace. 
at the feet of Jesus Christ. That's how we fight, right? We sing it. I'm surrounded by you, you know. That's because we know where his feet are, right? Mary is not complaining and doesn't need to because she is serving the right thing. <laughs> when we serve the right thing and when we know it, you have to know it. Can you see that? You have to know that you serve the right thing. Otherwise, you will fall into it. Otherwise, you will not understand it. But Mary got it. She was at the feet of Jesus Christ. And she got it. She just knew this is the place to be. I'd imagine what anointing that would be in that place. Anyway, just me. <laughs> I like to think those thoughts. But Jesus here the same, right? Mary is in her behavior telling in a subtle way what Mary should be doing because she is the one that longed just to sit at his feet as well. But life got in the way. Now when you start to complain about what other people are doing and living and walking with Jesus, maybe then it's time for you to look at your own life and your own Christian walk. Stop looking at other, don't go into the comparison game with Jesus toward other people. If you find yourself in that place, just move within and, f and figure out where you lost track of Jesus because that's the reason for it. Every time we move into comparison game with Jesus, that's the reason for it. We lost track with Jesus at some point of sitting and worshiping with him. Right? So we should move back and focus all our attention on Jesus. I was thinking about that when you sit at someone's feet, the only place that you can look is up into their face. So Mary was looking up into the face of Jesus Christ. That's what happens when we worship, isn't it? Well, it should be. <laughs> isn't that nice to think about? Not much to do. Just sit at his feet and worship, right? But shouldn't you be doing more? No, because the Bible says so. <laughs> but, but are you really sure? Yes, because the Bible says so. But isn't there things that you need to do? Yes, but you know that you can do it. You can have a worshiping heart while doing it. That's what it's all about. Resting within Jesus while you move through life. Don't get, don't get distracted by the things and the affairs of life. And then you have to know, just like Mary, then you have to know sometimes you've got to sit down at the feet of Jesus Christ, even though you need to prepare a meal. Even though there are things that you need to do in your life, sometimes you just got to sit down when you're at work. Sometimes you got to just go to the toilet and worship Jesus a little bit. Because otherwise, life gets in the way. Am I right? <laughs> Isn't that right? Sometimes you just got to have a little corner of yourself with Jesus Christ somewhere. Otherwise, life will take over, right? Isn't that wonderful news? Just sitting with him. Okay, let's see. <laughs> But life got in the way for her. Life got in the way for Martha. Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> One time I was at a Bible study, something, blah, blah, blah. And this woman, she said to me that we are either Martha or Mary. And she said to me, which one are you? I said, I'm Mary. And she got so upset with me. <laughs> and she said, no, no, you cannot be Mary. Why? Because she was Martha. But in some sense, we're both, aren't we? 
Mm. And, but we have to die to the Martha so we can come to become a Mary and just sit at his feet, right? <laughs> so sometimes we're going to have that opposition from the dearest one, the ones that are closest to us, the ones that we don't think should be the ones because Martha was the one inviting Jesus over. So I think maybe Martha, Mary was thinking this could not happen. It would be okay for me just to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and worship him. I think Mary probably thought that it would be all right that Mary, Martha would understand, that Mary had those thoughts that Martha would understand that she would just sit there. I think it's going to be okay for Martha if I'm just going to sit here because she's the one inviting him over. But that's not the way it works. Have you noticed that? So what we should focus on is always our relationship with Jesus. Something is always going to get in the way. And it's always the ones or the things that you least think it for it should be. Always. It's a rule. <laughs> it's a spiritual rule. That's the way it is. It's in the book. I read it over and over for you. You know this, right? Why is it like that? Because Jesus wants us all by himself. He wants us all by himself just to lean in on him, to serve him, not to get us distracted by things or businesses in life. To look at his face, not as his hands. What do you think maybe Martha was thinking while she was preparing all the food? I'm going to make it real good for Jesus. Have you ever thought about the things that you think is really important to Jesus is not important at all? <laughs> it's not. It's not important. Because Jesus said that Mary found the one thing that's really important. Worshipping me. Right? So Ma Martha was probably in the kitchen preparing all the food, thinking I'm going to make it all right. And then she was probably looking out, seeing Mary just sitting there and Jesus talking, having no attention from him. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Have you noticed when you do your own thing, you don't get the right attention from Jesus because Jesus actually just waiting for you to put it down. Have you noticed that? <laughs> right? Just, when, when is she going to be over with that business, man? I'm over here in the morning waiting for you, honey. <laughs> That's Jesus. Just waiting for you to get tired of your own business. For you to get tired of your own striving in your own affairs of what is right and what a religious Christian life should look like. Right? Because that's the nature of the carnal. Martha was like that. She was preparing all the food. Because that's the way that we do it when we have guests. We make food. But Jesus did not ask her. It's different with Jesus. Have you noticed that? It's, these things are not important. Those businesses in life is not important for Jesus. He will take care of everything else. It's a side reward that he will take care of everything else. But he wants you to focus in on him, just like Mary. Mary was not occupied with food, drinking, or clothing, or anything else. She was just occupied sitting at his feet, worshiping Jesus, looking into his face. And that was it. And he said she found the one thing that's important. You can get so much out of this story, right? Mm. <laughs> so it must have been annoying for Martha not to have any attention from Jesus, them sitting in the living room, her in the kitchen, maybe not even being able to hear what it is that he was teaching. Mm. How very annoying. Well, honey, you can just put it down and go and sit with Martha. That's the invitation. 
Isn't that wonderful? Yes. He made it so simple that we can hardly grasp it. He made it so easy that we can hardly grasp it. Yes, there is sufferings and trials, you know this, but it's easy because we have Jesus. Because in that place, we can lean on him. He is the rock, isn't he? Mm. The only rock there is. Mm. Um. And he, what did he say to Peter? The Lord spoke it to me on, during worship. I'm just going to read it for you. I like that. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it, will not overcome it. Nothing will come against if we learn to lean on that rock. <laughs> Nothing will come against you if we learn to lean on that rock. Because each of us is a rock, isn't we? That's bad English, but I'm going to say it anyway. Because we have Jesus. So we lean in on that rock, right? Within. We lean in on Jesus within. That's all we got, right? And that is what he's asking of us. To lean in on me. To sit and worship me, just like Mary. That was all she was occupied with. Years of work and striving <laughs> will change in just a few moments in the anointing of God. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. Just a few moments in his presence where the anointing flows, mm -hmm. then everything is just fine. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And you just know in that place, you are going to take care of the situation for me mm -hmm. so I can lean mm -hmm. on you. And I can trust you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that we should lean on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now the only thing that you can lean on is a rock. Everything else falls apart, right? <laughs> so let's lean in on Jesus, the rock. Mm -hmm. Let's lean in on the church of Jesus Christ, the rock. <laughs> that is the whole point of a church so that we should be able to lean in on each other in Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And stop striving in all the affairs. Stop having an opinion about all the things that goes on with other people, right? Mm -hmm. Just lean in on Jesus. Have you noticed how very simple life gets when you lean in on Jesus? Have you noticed that when you come into the place of yielding and you just soak and soak and soak and soak and soak, then all in that soaking and in the presence of Him, all your problems just disappear. Have you noticed that? <laughs> then there's suddenly no longer a problem, you know, and then you just get happy, you know. When I was preparing for today, when I drove up here, I was so happy for no reason in that sense other than I was just in his word just in his presence just leaning in on him right the problems I have they're still there but I have faith in him you are my rock right leaning in on him worshiping him yielding to him that's what the Word and the Spirit of God does. Mm -hmm. Even when you have it, you know, you can just read in the Bible and you get happy. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with what you're going through. You can just read in the Word and then you just get full, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's alive. It's a living book with His Spirit. All right, let's see. Is it helpful? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. 
Jesus. Hmm. I find it interesting that it's two women and their sisters and their family. I find it interesting that women have this, that it's depicted in this way with these two women. Not two men, but two women. I find it interesting <laughs> because women have this tendency. I want you to be very aware of it. Women have this tendency of really moving through and, and going into the comparison game too with others, especially when you do the right thing, when you think that you're doing the right thing for Jesus. This thing arise, really pay attention to it. Don't let yourself be deceived by it in the workings of the things that you do. Be awake. There is something to that. Women can be so vicious. <laughs> Men are not like that. <laughs> Much more straightforward. She's coming against her sister. It's her sister. It's not even a stranger. It's her sister. She doesn't even want her sister to be close to Jesus. Mm. <laughs> How sad that is. <laughs> right? Mm. She's not... And she doesn't even have a problem about going to Jesus and complaining about her. It's her sister. It's family. <laughs> but that's what the Spirit of Jesus does. It splits. Because when the Spirit is in the house, everything is revealed. Have you noticed that? <laughs> When the Spirit of God is in the house, everything is revealed of what is inside of you. <laughs> everything is being shown to you, right? So when you're in worship with Jesus, everything is being shown to you. If you stay around long enough in worship, when it gets too uncomfortable in the worship, could you just stay a little longer? You know, every time we worship, I wait to the point of where I'm really happy and I just want to stay in worship. That's the place of where I take myself out of it. <laughs> I don't take myself out of it when it's uncomfortable for the carnal. I take myself out of it when my carnal has finally soaked so much in his presence that it's just want to stay there. That's the place where we should be, isn't it? So whenever we have that Martha thing going on in our life, Soak and lean on Jesus. Yield and lean in on Jesus, right? <laughs> How long until you're soaked enough? <laughs> until you're more occupied with Jesus than you are with the carnal. Until you're more occupied with Jesus than the unfairness that you go through. How long? Until you're more occupied with Jesus than the anger that you're feeling. How long? Until you're more occupied with Jesus than the hurt. How long? Do you get it? Just stay with him. Just stay with him. How long? Sometimes hours and hours and hours. Yes, that's true. We're so untrained in this area. But wouldn't it have been wonderful if Martha would have been sitting with Mary instead? Yes. And these two sisters could have had a wonderful story to share about Jesus Christ when he left the house. Such a peace in the house, right? <laughs> they would have common ground. Wonder what it's like when Jesus left the house. We don't hear anything about that. Wonder what it was like between those two sisters. But that's what the Spirit of God does. It splits right open, right? Is it in Romans or in Hebrew? I can't remember right now. 
But this, when the spirit is there, it moves through marrow and bone, right? It cuts through everything, right? It sees everything. The spirit sees everything. And by the seeing of it, it reveals everything. So take to heart what it is that the spirit of God is revealing to you. In the moment of where it's really uncomfortable, don't get out of it. Just stay put. Just wait for Jesus. Because the spirit of God to the carnal is so uncommon and so fearful remember when jesus remember on the mount of transfiguration when jesus showed himself and peter right away wanted to build a tent because his carnal got nervous doesn't get it don't expect your carnal to get jesus no no just die and then you'll get jesus <laughs> right Thank you, Speedy. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Right? Yeah. The only thing that the carnal will ever do until it's dead enough is be in the way. <laughs> it's not... The Bible says an enmity toward Christ, and we see it so obviously in this story of Martha and Mary, Right? It's an enmity. It always wants something. It's always needy, and it's, it's never happy in its own. It always wants something, and somebody else got to change so that the carnal can be happy. The circumstances or life or people or whatever it is for it to be happy, and then you know what? It's still not happy. Am I right? And then when you get it, you know, something else arises to the surface that the carnal thing needs to change. <laughs> it will never get happy. That's why I act like Mary. Just sit at his feet. Just, Amen. just worship him. Just soak in his presence until you're so marinated that there's nothing left except for the glass. Right? Remember I talked about the glass? Yeah. That's all that should be of us. Just glass so that his spirit can shine through. Right? That's all. Just, just wait for Jesus. Amen. And it's so poor to say he's so worth waiting for because there is no words, right? Amen. He will take care of everything in your life. Sometimes we got to say that a lot of times to ourselves, but it is the truth. Those who give up life, family, and whatever you have, I will give to you in this life hundredfold in return. Jesus will take care of you. He will. He will take care of the things that you have in your life. What he wants from, you know, right away when we said yes to Jesus, everything is all about our faith, just leaning in on him. That's what it's all about. Every trial we go through, that's what it's all about. Right? It's not a question of if he will come through for you. No, that's not a question. It's just when. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta wait. And in the waiting, you're being purged. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bit a little circumcision going on. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> or maybe a lot of circumcision. <laughs> and you think you can't need to bear any more they can be circumcised Lord <laughs> am I right <laughs> oh, and you think there's more and you know along the way you're just going to see more in depth of yourself how wretched you really are and Jesus still loves you and you're just going to get so excited for Jesus right and the spirit of God right all right Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Lord? We will wait for you. Jesus.
Jesus. Mm. All right, let's take Sacramenta. When I prepared this, the Lord said, put on another one for you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask that you will bless this bread and this drink. Consecrate it, Lord, for the sole purpose of you. Let it all glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that we can partake We love everything that you have for us, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. You made the bread. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life so that we may have life. You may drink. Shalabasso con andolo basso 